So today I want to talk about financial literacy, what separates somebody from poor uh, to middle class, uh, from rich to wealthy. So usually, you know, when you're first learning financial literacy, you're going to hear me talk a lot about stream or streams of, of income, uh, multiple streams or someone that have singular stream. Uh, and, and that usually uh, is uh, someone that is middle class. Now, someone that's poor has no uh, steady stream of income. Not one primary uh, stream of income. It might be from begging. It might be from finding money or taking items that you, you have retrieved or found and, and tried to sell them. But for the most part, there is no primary uh, stream of income for someone that is poor. And you read the Bible, it says that the poor will always be among us. Um, I think society has not done a good job of helping folks that are homeless, people that are um, extremely severely poor and have no ways of having the stable um, flow of income coming in. So you'll see it in the biggest cities and the smallest cities of people that are are poor um, and, and just trying to make a way, uh, asking for money, trying to get it any way they can possibly. And that is... Um, you know, someone that is poor. Now, what's interesting is the only difference between somebody that is poor and someone that is, you know, the entry level of middle class is just a stream of income. You give that steady stream of income to someone that is poor, they can be middle class overnight. So that's the thing people have to understand, though, is that when you're on the minimum level of the middle class, you have that one primary stream of income, which is your job, and potentially you can lose that job just like that. There are a lot of these states that are employment at will, meaning the company can fire you whenever they want to. Now, you can contest it and potentially get unemployment, but it still won't be the bulk uh, of you know, the overall income. So a lot of folks are taught early on to get a good job. That's why you see when someone tells someone that they're a janitor or that they're an assistant here or that it's an entry-level position, people don't really flinch because we are taught that you know we got to get some top jobs in order to have the illusion of inclusion of wealth. So someone that is middle class from the entry level to the minimum standpoint is someone that has a primary stream of income, but it's usually just only one. Now, go up the ladder, someone that is in the mid-level, so that's more like management. Not executive level, but more management, right? More director uh, level. Uh, those folks still have one primary stream of income and honestly can end up being um, entry level overnight or poor overnight if they lose that stream of income. But they have they make mid level mid level mid level income. We're talking about potentially uh, you know fifty five sixty thousand and above um, they are making. But again, it's only one stream of income. Now, when you go up up the ladder, you're you're seeing the folks that are making the eighty eight um, the eighty ninety thousand and above. Um, you know the high earners. You know. 150, 200,000. And actually, we could just say that, that they're making, um, you know, the six figures and above. Those are the high uh, earners of the middle class uh, who, again, only have one stream of income. Some of them, a few of them might have additional stream of income, uh, this investing in property, investing in stocks, but still not next level wealth. But it is. As far as to the middle class, they are the cream of the crop. To the poor, they're the cream of the crop. To the entry-level middle class, even to the mid-level 
class, they are the cream of the crop. These are your doctors. These are your CEOs. Uh, these are your lawyers. Uh, you know, these are your CFOs, COOs. These are these individuals that are VPs, presidents um, of the company that are, are making that. Now, there are some that are making in this percentage, small percentage. Uh, I would say that small, but I would say maybe 10 to 20 percent of that percentage are making extremely, um, you know, 500,000 and beyond. But we're talking about people that are the president of 500 Fortune 500 companies. Where there are other companies that they have tons of presidents, tons of VP, not of the entire company, but a certain department. So those folks are are in the you know the one one fifty and above. Now when we get to the rich. The rich folks, um, we're talking about. Um, so the rich, um, you know, are in a position where they are business owners, right? Uh, that are building these these billion dollar million dollar corporations um so but the rich are the ones that you know they're making a million and beyond these individuals have multiple streams of income but they are the ones that primarily are the ones that it came from them they build the organization they built and they they made it this vast entity and not everyone knows it. So um, those individuals are, you know, making millions of dollars, have multiple streams of income. Um, they're making their money work for them. Um, but when we get to the wealthy, the wealthy find everybody to work for them. Everybody under the wealthy are making them more money. So they're hiring folks to make them more money. They are having people around them that are making them more money. They have, you know, the rich probably has maybe four to five streams of income, um, but the wealthy is a walking conglomerate. Um, they probably have 10 to 20 streams of income. Um, a lot of passive income on their end as well, uh, real estate to tech, uh, to the various um, entities. Um, so a lot of them, you'll see them having uh, investment in financial companies and media companies and food companies. Um, they are more in the storage, the grain storage. If you think about Joseph in the Bible, he was in the grain storage uh, business. He had a monopoly. So you think of someone that owns a sugar company, right? Which that, that's somebody that's rich. Whereas the wealthy is the one that owns the sugar, all right? It's the rich person owns the bread company, but the wealthy individual owns the grain. So they're owning the actual natural resource. Uh, they're um, owning the actual, uh, the oil refineries. They're owning uh, the actual salt refineries. You know, there's a Cargill family um, that is responsible for having a grain storage. And in their family, they've had over 10 billionaires in their family at once off of a grain industry. A lot of you don't know their name. You think about Sam Walton. Yes, he built it up from a, from a, um, you know, a middle class company to a, a rich company. Now it is a global company. Um, and I'm sure they have a lot of manufacturing access as well. And now that family is wealthy. So even, you know, you know, Sam Walton is dead and gone. His kids are eating off the fruit of their father's work, so to speak. So that is the difference is the higher you go up this ladder, um, you know, you know, you go from wealth to someone that owns natural resources, um, to when you hit from wealth to you go to the middle class, a lot of them don't own anything. Yes, there's some small business owners in the mix, but the the entry level or minimum middle class uh, to the mid middle class, they have a primary income of their nine to five job. Um, and that's just going from entry level to mid level uh, to executive level. Once you reach the rich status, now we're talking about business ownership. 
And then when you go higher than that, you, you see the folks like a Warren Buffett where he owns tons of companies based off the amount of stock that he has purchased in that company. So you look at Warren Buffett owning Geico, owning some real estate company, having major uh, investments in tech companies like Apple. Um, so even Pepsi, even the uh, I think he has some media news news post uh, investments as well. You look at Jeff Bezos. You know a lot of people look at it as he just has a retail company, but he's also the largest um, you know cloud uh, software cloud storage space. So once you get higher on the list, that's when you're seeing folks having a massive monopoly on a storage entity. Google, their search engine uh, storage entity um, that they've had, a monopoly on search searches, even though they got, they, they got sued by the DOJ and lost. Um, but these all these companies, if you want to really think about it, the companies that do well, well, the rich companies, they create products. Rich companies create products, but the wealthy companies brings um, build software and some type of natural resource and they have multiple streams of income so that's the difference for someone that is poor that has no steady stream of income no or no stream of income of all at all but the wealthy person at the top of the food chain has more streams of income than they can count and they have more of a storage unit so you think about the John D. Rockefellers of the world. What storage unit did he have? Even though they broke it up a little bit, but he had a monopoly on oil. That was his mon monopoly on oil. The J.P. Uh, um, Morgans of the world had a monopoly on finance. The Rock R Rothschilds, a monopoly on finance institutions. Um, you know, you know. The, the Carnegies and, and 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 all those individuals, you know, relations to Steel and all all that, you know. So that is something that you got to understand is that whatever you're trying to build, these individuals on the wealthy end are having uh, a monopoly on stores that folks need. What's the need? Food. What's the need? Uh, clothing. Well, clothing is not real. I guess it's a need, uh, but it's something that <clears throat> is a high waste uh, mechanism associated with food uh, and clothing. Tons of food is bought and tons of food is thrown out. Tons of clothes is bought, tons of clothes is is, is uh, thrown out. Uh, so they have a monopoly on that. Uh, what, what's another need? Housing. Housing is a big need for housing. People have to find somewhere to lay their head. Transportation, even if you don't have your own car, transportation of someone getting on the bus, getting on the train, uh, getting on uh, the airplane, all of these elements. So that is the biggest difference between someone that is poor, um, you know, and someone that is middle class. Um, 